Hallelujah. Told to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Told to Yah, for this is his day, Israel. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in him. For it is through him that we have Teshua. We have victory in any battle, in any circumstance that we may endure. Hallelujah. Hardness as a tough soldier. Hallelujah. I do want to continue as of last night concerning this topic, this message of condemn. Because everyone in this place this morning, everyone that has listened about Veer of Live Stream, whether you listen by recording, whoever may hear this message, we all deserve to be separated from the presence of Almighty Yahweh. We all deserve hell, simply put. And Yahweh, he is more justified by the deeds that we have done and that we have constructed as a people and as a nation, that he should wipe us out. But the only thing that gives us any kind of hope, any kind of resolution for salvation or to be Yahshua is through Yahshua HaMashiach, the word. Because Torah, time after time, gives us the example. It gives us word by word and detail by detail what happens when we transgress his Torah or his mitzvah? Yeah. Affliction of pain. There are certain diseases that he allowed amongst the house of Israel and death. Because we continually and continu continuously as a nation transgress or we turn at his reproof, yeah. Israel. And it should not be. But because of Yahshua HaMashiach, that has been made the perfect offering for the sins of all men. Yahweh, he is just. Here's what we would call, he is fair, Yisrael. Yahshua, he died and shed his dumb for all men, but especially the chosen house of Yisrael. Why? Because Yahweh, he declared from the beginning of all things that he will have a nation and that he will have a people that will barat and that will serve him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that tough, Yisrael? that we have something greater to look forward to than the grave. Yeah. We have something forward to look greater to more than the riches that we could accumulate on this earth. And if we just be honest and look at ourselves, we really have nothing. Hallelujah. We have nothing, Israel. So why don't we, with the substance that we have, give all that we are unto Almighty Yahweh for his service, that he may have his will, that he may have his way in our lives. Hallelujah. So I do want to turn, if you will, with me where I had left off somewhat on last night. And uh, I will get into the second part of this concerning the price that was paid for us, Israel, And the price for the life even of Yahshua HaMashiach. Turn with me to 2 Samuel. Let me begin there. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4. This is concerning Yahweh or Dawid building this house for Almighty Yahweh. What are we building for Almighty Yahweh on this day? Should we be preparing a place of dwelling? Or should we already be prepared, Israel, for the fullness of his Ruach HaKodesh? to enter into our lives, into our land. There is a preparation, and there is a building, a buy-it that we must build. And it must be prepared. It must be ready, Israel. It says here in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4, that it came to pass that night that the word of Yahweh came to Nathan, the Nabi, saying, Go tell my servant Dawid, thus saith Yahweh, Shall you build a house for me to dwell in? Can we build a house physically that will hold the presence of Almighty Yahweh? Whereas I have not dwelled in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Mizraim. Even unto this day, there has not been a place of dwelling for the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. But have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Are we not the tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh? 
Should not Aleph be the dwelling place of the Kodesh Ruach Yisrael? Where is Yahweh? Where is his presence? Where is he walking in this day? He said that he had not walked or dwelt in any place since he had brought Yisrael out of the land of Mizraim. Has he not brought us out, Yisrael? Out of bondage? Out of this Torah of the flesh, which is just condemnation and death? Has he not brought us out? Then where is the dwelling of the Ruach HaKodesh? Where is the place that he should write his name in our left, Yisrael? Have we prepared a place? Are we filled with the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh on this day? He said, all the places where I have walked with the children of Yisrael, he said. Of Yisrael, I, a word with any of the tribe of Yisrael, whom I have commanded to shepherd my people, Yisrael, saying, why build you not me a house of cedar? Verse 8. Now therefore, so shall you say to my servant Dawid. This is what he speaks unto the house. Are we not after the zero of the seed of Dawid, Israel? Yeah. Thus said Yahweh of hosts. He said, I took from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people, Israel. Yeah. He said, I have taken you out of the pastures. You were one that took care of the sheep. And I have made you a king. I have set you up. That you may lead my people. Verse 9. And I was with you whether you went and have cut off all your enemies out of your sight. And have made you a great name. Like to the name of the great men that are in the earth. He said, I took you out from this low estate. You were just a sheep herder. And I brought you up. I have brought you forth. I have given you wisdom. I've given you understanding. I've given you my ruach. He said, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Yisrael, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. We're not, are we in our own place, Yisrael? Is this land our own land? Has it been given unto the house of Yisrael? Sure it has, but for a certain time, Yisrael. But right now, the heathen rage. They have the power and the dominion because Yahweh has given them that for the time Israel. So where is our place of dwelling? It should be in Yahshua HaMashiach. See, this world is not ours, Israel, because if it was, Yahshua said, he said that my servants will fight for it. We have something that is much greater that we must ascertain. We must be in that place where we sin not in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It's more than just a physical place that we must be in, Yisrael. There's a place in the Ruach where we must abide in at all times. We need to build unto Yahweh. We must have this place that is prepared for the dwelling of his Ruach HaKodesh, Yisrael. Because without that, we cannot stand. Without his Ruach, without the leading of his spirit, Yisrael, we are condemned as a people. We are condemned unto damnation. Whether there's hope, no hope, separated from the presence, from the breath of Almighty Yahweh. He said, a place of their own that they have to move no more. Neither shall the children of injustice afflict them anymore as before time. So the affliction shall cease when we get to that place, Israel. When we get to that place that Yahweh desires us, even the battles of our own mind. And, and the battles that attacks our own Ruach and our moon that we have will be no more. It will cease Yisrael. Yeah. And since the time that I commanded judges over my people, Yisrael, and have caused you to rest from all of your enemies, also Yahweh tells you that he will make you a house. He will make us a house, Yisrael. Yeah. He has made a place for us to dwell in safety. Has he not prepared a kingdom, New Jerusalem, a place that has not been made by man's hands, but only by the hands of Almighty Yahweh where there's no corruption? He has prepared a place for us, Yisrael. Verse 12. And when your days be fulfilled, 
And you shall sleep with your fathers, your avats. He says, I will set up your seed, your zirah, after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. And I shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Has not the throne of Yahshua HaMashiach, has that not been established, Israel? Yeah. By the word, by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it cannot be moved. Yeah. Verse 14. He said, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And listen to this. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of mortal man. He shall chasten us. He will correct us in his judgment. He will tear our backside with the rod of his judgment, with his correction, Israel. Isn't that what a father of love that has a hava, does not he correct his son? Sometimes it could just be verbally by words. But there are times where you must institute, you must apply the rod. Of correction and with the stripes of children of the sons of Adam surely when you're beating them when you get a whooping or a whipping back in the day you will look back there you will see the the marks you will see the stripes Israel where am I going with this don't we know that Yahshua HaMashiach he took the stripes upon his back for us Israel was he a rebellious son unto Almighty Yah? Did he transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? But yet he received these stripes upon his back. What was the purpose? What was the cause? What was the intent of those stripes upon his back, Yisrael Yah? It was because of our sins. He was the, the offering, the sacrifice for Yisrael Yah. The Torah even says in Proverbs that, that even wisdom entereth more into a man that is Sadiq than the stripes upon the back of a fool. But yet, Yahshua HaMashiach was a man of wisdom and understanding. He was the Torah made flesh. Yet he took upon you. He took upon us, the house of Yisrael, Yah, the stripes that should have been upon our backs. Hallelujah. He took it upon his backs. You know what? We beat ourselves, Israel. We cause pain and agony upon one another. Yet those stripes don't bring forth the healing balm of Gilead unto the house of the nations of Israel. But the stripes that have been put upon the back of Yahshua HaMashiach has provided and is the healing for the nations of Israel. Hallelujah. So why, would he, why did he have to submit to this, this somewhat of condemnation for the sins which we have committed? Because this was the only way through Almighty Yahweh that we have redemption today, Israel. I don't know about you, but my heart breaks at even the thought that because of me, a man had to die that I might live. He was the scapegoat for Israel. Hallelujah. He took away all of our sins, Israel. Not that we should continually sin, but he has given us the opportunity and time before the power and the throne of Almighty Yahweh to get it right, that we sin not. Hallelujah. And at any time we can come unto his throne of mercy, and there is forgiveness through Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So, because Almighty Yahweh, he loves us. He chasing us. By the word and the rod of his Torah, Yisrael, as does a father, a true father would do. Verse 15. He said, but my steadfast loving kindness shall not depart away from him. Aren't you glad for that, Yisrael? Yeah. See, Rehah Dawid, Yisrael, he made a statement that we may understand. That Yahweh, he did not forsake Yahshua HaMashiach on the state. You see what it says here? He said for, in verse 15, but my steadfast loving kindness. How many of you are glad for the steadfast loving kindness of Almighty Yahweh? He said, but my steadfast loving kindness shall not depart away from him. It says it right there, Yisrael. So Yahweh, he did not 
leave or take his Ruach from Yahshua HaMashiach. He didn't leave him on that stake alone. But yet, because of the sin and the iniquity that was upon that body, it was a sight that would turn the face of any man. That Yahshua HaMashiach, he was beaten to a pulp that he was not even recognized by those that knew him, Yisrael, physically. But yet the Ruach HaKodesh was not moved for him, Yisrael. We have been deformed as a people. Even when the world looks at us, they question, who is this people? They, they don't know us, Yisrael. But yet Yahweh, he knows us. And he has not separated himself from us. No matter what we have done, no matter the things we have endured, Yisrael, he said that he, has, he will not depart away from him. Also, he says here, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. So he took that away from, from Saul. He said he took it. But yet he said from this zero or from this seed of Dawi, he said, I will not depart because of my steadfast loving kindness. My promises would not depart. My ahava for you would not depart. But we must abide in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. We cannot continually sin before his presence. We must come to that place of maturity whereby we can say no, where we can resist the enemy, where we can resist our own flesh and our lust and what we desire to do and abide by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. Continually concerning the stripes. Turn with me to Eo, chapter 9, verse 2. Eo believed that he was stricken of Almighty Yahweh. And that in some way, by his testimonial, if you read Eo, that he has been forsaken and forgotten by Almighty Yahweh. That why would he condemn the Siddiq or the righteous man? He said, I have walked righteous before you, Almighty Yahweh. Then why have these things fallen upon me? What was the purpose of that, Israel? He says here in Eo chapter 9, verse 2. He says, I know it is so of a truth, but how should mortal man, a man of flesh, be just before Almighty Yahweh? If he will content with him, he cannot add to him one of a thousand. If he will contend or question Almighty Yahweh by question or by reason, he could not even understand or comprehend one out of a thousand, Yisrael. That, that's not very good odds, is it, Israel? It says in verse 4, He is wise and love and heart and mighty and strength, who has hardened himself against him and has shalom and prospered, which removed the mountains and they know not, where he overturns them in his anger which shakes the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof, they tremble. This is the power of Almighty Yahweh. This is his strength, Yisrael, which commands the sun, and it rises not, and seals up the stars, which alone spreads out the Shemayims, and treads upon the waves of the sea. Does not Yahweh tread upon the waves of the sea? Does not his Torah ride upon the waters? Did not Yahshua HaMashiach walk upon the waters, Yisrael? Which makes great bear, Orion, and Pelides, the chambers of the south, which forms great things past finding out. Yes, the wonders without number. Lo, he goes by me. And I see him not. Don't you know that the presence of Yahweh, it goes by us, Israel, is amongst us, and we don't even know it. That his Ruach dwells in the house with his people, and we don't even know it, Israel. It's more than us being in this physical place or this physical building, but it's wherever we go. Why? Because we should take him within the tabernacle of our own love. And yet, and our day-to-day -day endeavors and our responsibilities as we labor, we don't even know he is with us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Eob, he says, he passes on also, but I do not perceive him. We do not even discern 
the presence of Almighty Yahweh when he speaks unto us, Israel. Verse 12. Behold, he takes away. Who can hinder him? Who can stop all, Almighty Yahweh from taking away? Even Eo, he proclaimed when his children was taken away. The houses, the land were destroyed. He said, Yahweh, you give and you also take away. He, he also said this. He said, should we receive of the blessings of Almighty Yahweh and not receive of the evil? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's all tough when it comes to Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Yeah. To the pure, all things are pure. We, we need to have the pure mind of Almighty Yahweh. Well, Zion King around me, I'm going through this situation, and, and, and it is not tough. <clears throat> but yet to the pure, all things are pure. There is a reason. It's for your strength. It's that you may be established, though we might not understand at the time, Israel, the hands and the workers of Yahweh is in all things. That's why everything we should give Yahweh told us. We should barack him for all things. Is that not what Eob did? He gave Todah unto Yahweh. He did not speak God with his mouth. He did not charge Yahweh foolishly with his lips. He said, behold, Yahweh, he takes away. Who can hinder him? Who will say to Almighty Yahweh, what are you doing? What is your purpose? What is your cause? Verse 13. If Yahweh will not withdraw his anger. He said, Rahab's helpers do stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him? What should we say unto Almighty Yahweh? And choose out my words to reason with him. What will we say, Israel? What could Eo say unto Almighty Yahweh? Realize that he is just but flesh. He's just a worm before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. How will he speak to him? How will he conversate with him? Verse 15. Whom though I were righteous, yet would I not answer. He still yet withheld held that, Yisrael, that testimony of his righteousness to Almighty Yahweh. But even with that, he says, but I will make supplication for mercy even unto my judgment. He knew that this was a judgment. He knew that there was a purpose for the things that he was enduring, Israel. Verse 16. If I had called and he answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice. For he breaks me with the tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. Verse 18. He says, He will not suffer me to, to not suffer me to take my ruah. In other words, he's saying he will not suffer me to take my own life, but fills me with bitterness. Who can compare what we go through, what we endure to what Yob, Yob went through? There's no comparison, Israel. Verse 19. He said, if I speak of strength, behold, he is mighty. He is the strong one. I am weak. And if of judgment, who shall set a time to plead? Verse 20. He says, if I justify myself. He even knew this. Even through all he went through. He knew if he would justify himself. He said, my own mouth shall condemn me. Do we find ourselves trying to justify our situation? Try to justify what we do? All right, we try to justify it. Don't you know we just condemn ourselves, Israel? And we through all this that Eo went through. He knew if he tried to justify even his very circumstances, that even by his very mouth he would be condemned, Israel. We condemn ourselves when we try to justify our sins, our shortcomings. We try to bring reason why this happened, why that. Well, I tell you why this happened, it's because of this. That's why I did that. That's why I transgressed the Torah. There's no excuse for us, Israel. Even in us trying to make our paths aright and straight, by our own mouths, we condemn ourselves, Israel. And don't you know if we condemn ourselves by our own mouths, or even if our living, our hearts condemn us, don't you know Yahweh is greater? 
What if he condemns us? How shall we come off from under that, Yisrael? EO says again, if I justify myself, he says, even my own mouth, it shall condemn me. And if I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me to be perverse. Hallelujah. We must be honest with ourselves, Yisrael. This is a wicked and it's a perverse generation. When the Torah speaks of that, it's not talking about the goi or the nations. We know that they are wicked. He's talking about the house of Israel. Yet time after time, we try to make our path straight. We try to, 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 to uh, make a reason why we do certain things, Israel, when there's no reason. Yahweh has given us everything that we need to overcome every situation. We don't have to lie, Israel. Just tell the truth. We don't have to steal. We don't have to take Israel, but yet we do it continuously, and it has to stop. The buck has to stop here, Israel. We are without any excuse. Why? Because we condemn ourselves with our own mouths. Hallelujah. Let us move on to chapter 10 of EO, verse 1. EO chapter 10, verse 1. He says here, that my soul is weary of my life. My soul wants to be set free. The pain of my existence, of my body, is so intense that I want to give up my ruach. He says, I will leave my complaint upon myself, and I will speak in the bitterness of my nephesh. I will say unto Yahweh, do not condemn me. Show me, therefore, you contend with me. Show me wherefore you contend with me. What do you have against me? Is it tough to you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Have you eyes of flesh? Do you see as men see? Do you judge things the way men judge things? We see through our flesh, Israel. We should discern everything by the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. He says, or do you as mortal man sees? Are your days as the days of mortal man? Are your years as a Gerber of valiant warrior's days? We know that the days of the breath of man is but short, Yisrael. It's as a vapor of smoke. You see it, and as you're looking at it, it ebbs away, Yisrael. He's asking Almighty Yahweh, do you judge after the sight, after hearing of man, after mere men discern or, dis or, or judges? Verse 6, that you inquire after my iniquities and search after my sins. That's what we do as a people. We acquire of iniquity. We search after sins by the seeing of what we discern by our eyes, Israel. Yahweh, he do not judge like that. Because in that judgment, if we judge that way, we will find that our judgment is unjust. And we judge by what we see. And what we hear without the Ruach HaKodesh, we cannot make a righteous judgment. Yet Yahweh, his judgment, it is righteous. He is Siddiq in what he judges, Yisrael. Verse 7. He said, no, he said, you know that I am not wicked. And there is none that can deliver out of your hands. Hallelujah. If I may, we can somewhat look at Yahshua HaMashiach and what he endured. If we can equate this somewhat with Eo, his body being ripped and torn, swords and bruises, just as the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yet he, he was without sin. Yet he endured. What was the purpose? Why? Was this the plan of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. It was the, this purpose was for the plan of Almighty Yahweh that we may not only be Yahshua or be saved in the end, 
but that we may understand, Israel, we must go through these same battles. The same state that Yahshua HaMashiach hung upon, we have a state that we must carry also, Yisrael. We must endure hardness as a tough soldier. The soldier just don't go down because he get a wound. He wraps that and he keeps fighting. Even a bullet wound, he fights on. When he's upon the ground with his, his instrument or his weapon, he fights with that until his life is ceased, Yisrael. We must also do that as a people. We must contend and fight for the Amunah that was given unto us, Yisrael. No, Yahweh, he didn't do all this in Yahshua HaMashiach for us to lay back in our rocking chairs and everything will be taken care of. We must endure the same thing that Yahshua HaMashiach endured. Yet, enduring what he did, it laid the path for us, Yisrael, that we may know, that we may understand, that we will not be ignorant, but that we will be, we be wise at what the will of Almighty Yahweh is. Chapter 34. We're still, we're still in Eob. Eob chapter 34, verse 11. Eob chapter 34, verse 11. It says here, For the work of the son of Adam shall he render unto him. What we do in these bodies, Israel, we shall be judged. Every word that proceeded out of our mouths, we shall be judged, Israel. And cause every man to find according to his ways. Yes, surely Yahweh, he will not do wickedly. He will not do wickedly, Israel. He is not unjust. Neither will the most powerful pervert judgment. Who has given him a charge over the earth? Or who has disposed the whole world? If he set his love upon man, if he gathered to himself his ruach and his breath, all flesh shall perish altogether. And the sons of Adam shall return even unto the dust. If now you have understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hates right govern? And will you condemn him that is most just? Is that what Yahweh does? Does he condemn the one that is just, and yet the wicked one, he lets walk free Israel? Is that how Yahweh does things? Verse 18. Is it fit to say to a king, you are Belial, or to a prince, you are wicked. How much less to him that accepts not the persons of a prince, nor regards the rich more than the poor, for they all are the works of his hands. They're all of the works of Yahweh's hands, Israel. So will he judge each one? Whether it is a king, whether it is a prince, whether it is poor, with equality, sure he will, Yisrael. He is just. He will not put on us no more than we could bear, Yisrael. And in a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and that the mighty shall be taken away without hand. See, even in the justness of Almighty Yahweh, he knew that we as a people and as a nation, we didn't have the wealth or the wherewithal to even pay for our own sins and our iniquities, Israel. Just to show his justness and how he discerns and how he uh, uh, separates even his own, his own anger, Israel. He allowed all to be put on Yahshua, his word. Why? Because his word can endure all things, Israel. It is by his word that we have life even today. It is his word that carries us from faith to faith or from imuna to imuna. When we have no other strength or we have no wealth or no any worth, Israel, we can always go back to his word. 
And it will give us everything that we need to continue, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We need Yahshua, the word. There's no other way that we can be accepted in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Continuing in EO, chapter 40, verse 2. Concerning the just judgments of Almighty Yahweh. Shall he that contends with Yahweh, the most powerful, instruct him? He that reproves me, let him answer it. This is Yahweh speaking unto Eo. Should we reprove Almighty Yahweh and what he does just right, Yah? Should we correct him? He said, then Eo, he answered Almighty Yahweh and said, Behold, I am vile. What was the last time we said that as a people, Yisrael? Yeah. Behold, I am vile, Almighty Yah. We find ourselves trying to find a way out of our present situations. We know that it's not really the best way, and it doesn't seem tough unto the flesh what we endure. Our hearts are broken. We have no hope. We have no imunah. And all we have to do in those times, in those trials, Israel, is just reckon ourselves, be honest with ourselves, because we are vowed. We're yet undone, Israel. And Eo, he understood this. And all of what he said to Yahweh, his questions, his adversities, he realized at this time that I am just a worm. I am vile. I am nothing before Almighty Yahweh. He said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer unto you, Almighty Yahweh? He said, I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Should not we do that, Yisrael? There are many times where all we have to do is just shut up. Just lay our hands out our mouth. And if we would just stand and be still, then we would see the Yasha, the salvation of Almighty Yahweh. See, we try to find another way out of our trials and another way out of our circumstance. Well, there's only one way, and that is to go in at the door of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. The word of Yahweh is so high we cannot go over it, so low we cannot go under it, and it's so wide, Yisrael, right, we cannot get around it. But yet we find ourselves questioning Yahweh why. Instead of just looking at ourselves and asking him why. Hallelujah. Why did Yahshua HaMashiach have to go to the state? Why did Yahshua HaMashiach have to suffer as he suffered? Don't you know it was for you, Yisrael? Yeah. But yet we are not willing to suffer for him. We're not willing to endure the condemnation even for our own sins and the just reward that has been given unto us. Why? Because we have sown unto the flesh. And of the flesh we reap corruption, Yisrael. We read corruption in these bodies. Hallelujah. And Yahweh, he says, even at that, Yahweh hears not mock. For whatever we sow, we shall reap it. But Yahweh, he did not allow us to see even the death as Yahshua HaMashiach saw it. And what he endured, why? Because we, we will not be able to endure it, Yisrael. It will not be enough. All of us in our wealth and our strength, we have strong off. Uh, all of us combined together, the house of Israel, y'all, they're listening by via of live stream. If the half of the anger of Yahweh was loose, even to the consuming of us, it would not even be enough, Israel, y'all. But even in his foreknowledge, he knew that. That he would not destroy a house on the people that he had elected and called. So what did he do? He put his word on the line. Because he knew his word could endure. By his word, he knew that it could take away all the sins of Yisrael. That we would not have to suffer the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Knowing that we could not stand. So he has given us apt time, even today, Yisrael. Why today is called today to get it right, Yisrael. That is the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. That is his enduring love and kindness, even unto a house which he had called Yisrael. Yeah. Eo said, I am vowed. What shall I answer unto you? And I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Verse 5. Once I have spoken, but now I will answer not. Yes, twice, but I will proceed 
no father. Then Yahweh, he answered unto Eo out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up your loins now, like a Gerber valiant warrior. Don't you see what Yahweh did? All Eo had to do was confess unto Yahweh that you are most high. Who am I that I should question you? I am yours. I belong to you, Almighty Yahweh. Who am I that I should question what you do unto this body? So even at his confession, and we know that even his, his uh, afflictions that he went through was lifted, even when he prayed, prayed for his ark. He prayed for his friends, Israel. Do we pray for one another? In our situation, our circumstances, don't you know there are others that are going through things that are much more diverse and hard than what we go through, Israel? But yet we do not pray for those because we're so much fixed on ourselves. We're so selfish as a people. That even Eo, when he prayed for his friends, and we even confess unto Almighty Yahweh, all I have to do is just be quiet, just hold my tongue, hold my mouth. And when he did that, Yahweh said, okay, all right. Now girdle up your noise. We need to girdle up the truth of Almighty Yahweh and hold it close to our loins, to our bosom, Israel. He said, like a Gerber valiant warrior. He didn't say it says soldier. He said, a valiant warrior. And I will demand of you and declare you to me. Verse 8. Will you also disannul my judgment? Will you not? Will you condemn me that you might be righteous? Can we condemn Almighty Yahweh for what he does that we might be righteous in our own eyes, Israel? Verse 9. Have your arm like Almighty Yahweh? Are our arms strong like Almighty Yahweh? Can we execute the judgments that Yahweh execute? No, we cannot. Or can you thunder with a voice like unto him? He says, deck yourself now with majesty and excellency and array yourself with grandeur and beauty. Cast abroad the range of your wrath and behold everyone that is proud, and abase himself. He says, look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. He says, hide them in the dust altogether, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess to you that your own right hand can deliver you. Can we deliver ourselves, Israel? Can we do all these things? Can we, as Yahweh delivered the house of Israel out of Mizraim, the Torah says he did it by a strong and a mighty hand. But yet, we cannot do that ourselves, Israel. We could not deliver ourselves out of sin and out of the bondage of this flesh or even of this world. It is by the hand of Almighty Yahweh. So let us be willing as a people to abide in the circumstances and in the trials and in the tribulation, the pains, the hurts, Israel. Why? Because Yahshua HaMashiach, he did it for us. He endured the stake for us. Could he have gotten down at any time? Sure he could have. But he did not. Everything that took place, he allowed it, Israel that we may have salvation even in the end time. And I'm going to get into this in the second part of this message, Israel. Hallelujah. I pray that we be attentive and that we hear, that we understand what Yahweh is saying in this last generation. We deserve to be condemned unto hell. But yet we question Almighty Yahweh. He has delivered us in these small, tangible afflictions. We charge him. As if he is doing something wrong, Israel. But yet we don't think about what was done on Yahshua HaMashiach. Was that not an injustice on our part? Yeah, it was an injustice that a man had to suffer for what we have done. But yet we are not willing to give even a minute unto him, a second unto him, Israel. And it is a shame. It is a shame we're not willing to endure affliction for his, his name's sake. 
He said that the world hated me first. I am the word. So it should not be a strange thing that we endure things because we abide in him, Yisrael Yah. It is for us to stand strong. And just as Almighty Yahweh said unto, said unto Eo, gird yourself as a warrior. Be strong. Endure these battles. Why? Because in the, in the end, we have the victory, Israel. Yah. We have the victory in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So let us endure harness as a tough soldier, as a valiant warrior, Israel. Yah. That we may see the end. And Yahweh, he has a beautiful end for us. It's not... Our destruction is not one. I mean, our end is not an end of destruction, but our end is a way of eternal life through Yahshua HaMashiach, the word. Part two. Let us turn to Tehillim, Yisrael, chapter 37, verse 23. Hallelujah. To Helium, chapter 37, verse 23. It's talking about, again, a Gerber warrior, does it not? You're looking at that verse? It said, the steps of a Gerber valiant warrior are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in his way. So we must girdle ourselves up, Yisrael Yah. We must girdle up the substance. What do we have? As a substance. All we should have is the Torah of Almighty Yah, with the moon that he has given to us, Yisrael Yah. We must hold those things, his Torah, his Mishra, close to our lips. Verse 24. He says, though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down. For Yahweh, he upholds him with his hand. Did not Yahshua HaMashiach endure as a warrior, as a Gerber valiant warrior, Yisrael Yah? He did not give up. He endured even unto the end. He said, I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the Sadiq forsaken. Did I not talk about forsaken? Yahshua HaMashiach, as we have heard from Reat Dawid, Yahweh did not forsake him. He cannot forsake his word. He cannot forsake Yisrael. So Dawid, he says, I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous, the Sadiq, forsaken, nor his Zerah begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his Zerah is blessed. And he says this unto us, Yisrael, to the house of Yisrael. He says, depart from evil and do tough and dwell forevermore. For Yahweh, he loves judgment. He loves judgment, Yisrael. And forsake not his sentence Kedusha. He does not forsake his righteous. Those that have been called by his name. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Do you not hear that, Yisrael? Do we have a seed of wickedness? Do we strive against Torah? Do you recall me talking about Cain and Abel? Abel was of this seed of wickedness. And what did he do? Everything he put his hands to, it was just not that situation there, the offering before Almighty Yahweh. This was his demeanor. This was the spirit that Cain operated under. That everything he did, it was not pleasing unto Yahweh. He was not pleasing what he did, Israel. Was he cut off? Was Cain cut off? Sure he was. And all he had to do is do that which is Sadiq. If there is wickedness that, that abides in the love of Yisrael or in your heart, you will do not that which is right. You won't do the things that is Sadiq, that is pleasing before Almighty Yahweh. It said that the seed of the wicked it shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell there forevermore. Don't we want to inherit the land, Yisrael? 
There's a property, there's a place in Yahshua HaMashiach that Yahweh has given unto us as a people. Verse 31. The Torah of Yahweh is in his left. None of his steps shall slide. Did any of the steps of Yahshua HaMashiach, did he slide at any time, Israel? That's why we must abide in the Torah at all times, Israel. We find ourselves falling or even sliding Israel, it's because we're not abiding in the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh, as he had commanded us. He said that the Torah of Yahweh is in his left. None of his steps shall slide. Verse 32. The, witch, the wicked watches the righteous, and he seeks to slay him. Going back to Cain again. Did he not seek for an opportunity to slay his brother Abel? Why? Because of the wickedness that was in his left. Because the thing that lay in his heart. He was of a different Ruach, Israel. He was not of the same Ruach as Abel was of. So we cannot operate under the spirit of Cain, Israel. Why? Because all it produces is death. You want to slaughter your brother or slander your brother? You hate your hope without a cause. This is that spirit of Cain. Verse 33. It says Yahweh will not leave him. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is just. Yahweh will not leave the house of Israel in the hands of the wicked, nor will he allow us to be judged by that judgment. Let's move on to chapter 30, chapter 94 of Tehillim, chapter 1. So even the word of the wicked cannot condemn the righteous. Why? Because it's just false accusations. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach, was he not condemned to the state? The scribes and the Pharisees, those that was in the hierarchy at that day, did they not seek to uh, take his life without any kind of evidence? They were going to produce false evidence unto Yahshua HaMashiach. They could not find any fault in him, Yisrael. But yet they sought to bring lies that would condemn him unto the state. It says to him, chapter 94, verse 1. O Yahweh Almighty, to whom vengeance belongs. Vengeance belongs unto Almighty Yahweh. O Yahweh, to whom vengeance belongs, show yourself. Lift up yourself, you judge of the Olam, of the earth, and render a reward unto the proud. Don't you know when the pride or the proudness of a man lifts himself up, that by that prayer, same pride, he will be brought down, Yisrael, will be destroyed. Yahweh, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utterly and speak hard things, utter and speak hard things? And all the works of their iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Yahweh, and afflict, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, and they murder the fatherless. Yet they say, Yah shall, Yah shall not see, neither shall Yahweh of Yaakov regard it. They don't even know that Yahweh sees every unrighteous act and deed that they do. Don't we understand we operate on a, a wicked conscience and a wicked perverse ruah? That Yahweh, he sees us, Yisrael, Yah. And will he not judge us accordingly? Yes, he will. They say that Yahweh shall not see, neither shall Yahweh of Yaakov regard it. He says, understand, you brutish among the people, and you fools. When you will be prudent. He that planteth the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? Nothing we do, Yisrael, 
is hidden from Almighty Yahweh. The wicked will not escape. I know it seems many times that the wicked, they continuously prosper, does it not? It seems like they can do anything and they get away with it, but they're not getting away, Israel. They're not getting away. Neither shall we get away, Israel, if we not, do not walk unto the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 10. He that chaseth the heathen shall not he correct. He that teaches Adam knowledge shall he not know. Yahweh, he knows, he yada, the thoughts of man, of Adam, that they are all vanity. They don't produce any life, Israel. Verse 12, blessed is the Gerber valiant war, warrior who Yahweh chastens. O Yahweh, and teach him out of your Torah. Hallelujah. That's why many times we're out there, we, he, he proclaims that we should be Gerber warriors, Israel, not just soldiers. We should move from just being a soldier in the infantry to being on the front lines, to being warriors, Israel. And if we would do that, even the Torah says here that he would teach him out of his Mishvah, out of his Torah. Verse 13, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity. Don't we want rest, Israel? From the adversities, from the trials, from the tribulations. He said, until the pit be dug for the wicked. Don't you know there's a pit dug for the wicked? The wicked, they, they will not go without being punished, without being condemned, Israel. They shall receive their just rewards. So let us not take our eyes off of the prize, Yahshua HaMashiach, and observe the wealth of the wicked, because they shall get their just reward, Israel. For Yahweh will not chase off his people, cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. There it is again. Is not the word of Almighty Yahweh his inheritance unto the house of Yisrael? Will he forsake it? No. He has given us his promises even from the beginning, Yisrael. So should we worry? Should we have any doubt that Yahweh will not work out his tough pleasure in us, Yisrael? He's going to have unto him a people. And we are that people, Yisrael. So allow Yahweh to chasten us. Even though the wicked seem like their hand it's strong and they're oppressing us, Israel. Y'all remember that we're in the hands of Almighty Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in his hands. And the wicked cannot pluck us out. Verse 15. But judgment also, but judgment shall return to the righteous, the Sadiq. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless Yahweh had been my help. We all can say that, Yisrael. Because the wicked, they rise up. Even the wickedness that dwells in the heart that we should get it out, Yisrael, it tries to rise up. But yet, Yahweh, he is our help. And unless it was by or through Almighty Yahweh, we will have no help, Yisrael. We will have no deliverance. We will not have a place where we can run into and find safety. Hallelujah. He says here, unless Yahweh had been my help, he said, my soul would have almost dwelt in silence. It would not have spoke up. It would not have rejoiced in the blessing. You know, when we find ourselves mom in the presence of Almighty Yahweh, there is a bondage there. Where we cannot uplift, uplift the name of Almighty Yahweh. We should not be bound in the house. We should be made free, Israel. This is a place where we can come and open our mouths unto Almighty Yahweh. Where we can pour out our love unto him. Hallelujah. Verse 18. He said, when I said my foot slips. He said, your steadfast loving kindness. Did I not read that very same quote earlier, Yisrael? 
concerning the steadfast loving kindness of Almighty Yahweh. He said, your steadfast loving kindness, O Yahweh, it held me up. That's all that held, holds us up, Israel. That is the only reason we are here today, because of the steadfast love and kindness of Almighty Yahweh. He said, in the multitude of my thoughts within me, your comforts delight my nephesh. He said, though these many thoughts run through my mind of my enemies seeking my life, even doubts that well up in my love, my unbelief, he says unto Almighty Yahweh, yet in your Torah do I trust, and it is your Torah that upholds and that lifts me up. Verse 20, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you? Does righteousness have fellowship with the wicked or with unrighteousness? Or unrighteousness with righteousness, Yisrael? He says, he says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you? Which frames mischief by a statue? Verse 21. They gathered themselves together against the soul of the righteous, of the Sadiq, and condemned the innocent blood. Don't you know that's what Cain did unto Abel? That was a condemnation. See, Abel received a reward that was not just. Why? Because of the wickedness of his brother. The wickedness are not going to give us anything that is just or of reward, Yisrael. That's why we should be careful of the gifts. When one tries to give you something, they try to give you some advice, they try to give you some type of encouragement, Yisrael. Hallelujah. It should only be by Yahweh's word that we find any kind of encouragement. You know, the, the wicked cannot soothe us in their wickedness. They don't have any words of wisdom that can be given, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Even the hidden man of our own land. It should not be him that leads us, but it should be Yahshua HaMashiach. See, we need to impel this flesh daily, Yisrael, that we can walk after the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 22. But Yahweh, he is my defense. Hallelujah. He is our defense, Yisrael. Why should we worry? Why should we stumble? Why should we, we be afraid to make that next step or to take that next step forward in Imuna? Don't you know that every step that we take brings us closer unto the kingdom, unto the Melku? So if Yahweh, if, if he is our defense, then who can stand before us? Why should we hesitate, Yisrael? Why, don't we, why can't we continue to press forward and to press on? Even though the enemy pursues us, even though the enemy is facing us, their front lines, yet we should go with the understanding and the knowledge that Yahweh he is with us, Yisrael. He said that we said that Yahweh, he is my defense. And my sovereign master, he is the rock of my refuge. Hallelujah. We should not fear anything, Israel, for he is the rock of our refuge. Verse 23, and he shall bring upon them, the enemy, their own iniquity. And he shall cut them off in their own evilness. Yes, Yahweh Almighty, he shall cut them off. So Yahweh, it is he that goes before us, Israel. Yahshua HaMashiach, he went ahead of us. So already, our enemies have already been cut off, Yisrael. All we have to do is walk in the footsteps of Yahshua HaMashiach. He has made the path. He has made the way. And all he says unto, the, unto Yisrael is to walk therein. Be obedient. Obey the Mishvah. Obey my Torah, my words. Hallelujah. There is no one that can stand up against us, Yisrael. There is no battery or no type of enemy or by their military might or by their numbers that can overcome us. Why? Because Yahweh, he is our rock. He is our defense. His Torah is our shield, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for that. Because we, we in our own present circumstances, we have no power. We have no strength. We are weak. 
But yet by his Torah, he declares, because I have written this in your lab, you declare that you are strong. You declare that you are more than able to endure all things. Hallelujah. To Helium 109, verse 22, as we move on, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Toda Yah for Yahshua HaMashiach. Tehidium chapter 109, verse, 20, verse 22. That we declares, he confessed, did not Eo have to confess? Pray for his, his friend, for his art before he was delivered, Israel. That we says here, for I am poor and needy. Did not Yahweh provide that we with an abundance of wealth, knowledge, understanding, riches, beyond measure. Yet Dawid declares here, for I am poor and I am needy. He's talking about the circumstance of his own heart and his own lives, Israel. And my heart is wounded within me. He said, I am gone like the shadow when it de declines. And I am tossed up and down as the locust. He says, my knees are weak through fasting. And my flesh fails of fatness. He says, I became, be became also a reproach to them. When they took, when they looked upon me, they shook, they shake their heads. He says here, help me, O Yahweh, my Almighty. O deliver me according to your steadfast loving kindness. There it is again, Yisrael. The steadfast loving kindness of Yahweh. That they might know that it is your hand that you, O Yahweh, has done it. Let them curse, but bless you. When they arise, let them be ashamed. But let your, serv your servant rejoice. He says, let my adversaries be clothed with shame. And let them cover themselves with their own confusion. As with a mantle. He said, I will greatly praise Yahweh with my mouth. Yes, I will hallelujah him among the multitude. He said, even through all this, I will lift up your name, Almighty Yahweh. I will lift up my hands before your presence, hallelujah, and declare that you are Almighty Yahweh that has kept me. Verse 31. For he shall stand at the right hand of the needy, to deliver him from those that condemn his soul, from those that judge, for those that seek hurt, Yisrael. It is Yahweh that shall condemn them, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And even in this verse, Yisrael, as I did this study, even condemn provides here in this uh, situation, it's a different pronunciation. It's not um, Rasha, but it's, pronou it's pronounced Shafat, and that is to judge, as the wicked judges. They don't judge with the equality of Almighty Yahweh. Their judgment is unjust. Their govern is unjust. Even their vindication, it says here the punishment, or even their rule, or even as they execute judgment, Yisrael. It's all unjust. Hallelujah. Only Yahweh is just, Yisrael, in everything that he does. Even though times we may not understand what he is doing, but if we would be patient and wait upon him, he will reveal all things, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, as I continue in this message, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yahweh is tough. And as Dawid says, his steadfast loving kindness 
his mercies, and endures forever. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Whoso loves instruction of discipline, he loves knowledge. Does not Yahweh instruct us? Does not he discipline us by his rod? Did not he say, I would discipline Yisrael when they step out of the Torah of the Mishvah by a rod? Just as a son, a father would do his son. Whoso loves instruction of discipline, he also loves knowledge. But he that hates reproof, he is brutish. A tough man obtains favor of Almighty Yahweh, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Do we produce wicked devices, Yisrael? Do we produce wicked devices against our neighbor? Wicked thoughts? We slander? We talk things that are false? We hear something and we run with it, Yisrael? That is a, a, that is a device of, of wickedness, Yisrael. Moving on to Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. Our judgment must be just, Yisrael. Just as Yahweh's judgment is just. Yahweh, he will condemn us, Yisrael, if we continue to produce these evil devices. Matitia, Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. We're getting closer to where I'm going to teach or preach unto us concerning the price, Yisrael. It says here, and Yahshua, going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed. Have we betrayed Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael? It says he shall be betrayed to the chief, chief Kohen and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him unto death. He was talking about himself, Israel, the word, the Torah. He has done no injustice, but yet he's even prophesying of himself what shall happen. False accusers shall condemn him even unto death. Verse 19. And shall deliver him unto the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to impel him. And on the third day, he says, he shall rise again. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for that. That on the third day, he rose again. Because if it was not for the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach, we would not have a resurrection, Israel. Hallelujah. Don't you know he resurrected us every day? Every time we get up as our, out of our beds, Yisrael, he has resurrected us with new life, with new hope, with a new day for us to go forth as valiant warriors, Yisrael, and to endure the battle once again and that we fight. Hallelujah. That we sin not. So Yahshua HaMashiach at this time, he explains this unto the disciples that I will be taken, I will be ridiculed, I will be beaten, and I should die this physical death, but yet on the third day I shall rise again. Now keep that thought, keep that in your mind, Yisrael. I'm going to read some here in Wisdom, chapter 2, verse 12, in Wisdom. And this is also an example that has been written in Torah concerning the path that Yahshua HaMashiach had to take that we may be saved in the end, Yisrael. So if you have this, wisdom, chapter 2, verse 12. It says, therefore, let us lie in and wait for the righteous man. Don't you know that's what the wicked do? They lie, they set up their evil devices, and they wait to shed innocent blood, the spirit of Cain. He said, because he, it says, because he is, Inconvenient to us, 
And he opposes our actions. That's what the word of Yahweh should do. That's what the Torah of Yahweh should do. It should oppose our wicked actions and our deeds, Israel. Right, yeah. He said he upbraids and, and reproaches us for transgression against the Torah. That's what the that's what Yahshua HaMashiach does. That's what the word does, Israel. Right, yeah. And objects to our infamous reputation to the transgressings of our education. Verse 13. He professes to have knowledge of Yahweh, and he calls himself the child of Almighty Yahweh. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous to us, even to behold. For his life is not like other man's. His ways are of another fashion. See, this should be describing us, Israel. We should be those that reprove the injustice, the injustice, and the unrighteous acts, Israel. We should be of another fashion. We should not be of the mindset of the world, but we should be different. Why? Because Yahweh has placed his Mishra, his Torah in us. He said we are a Beth Gula. We are a peculiar people. Verse 16. He said we are considered by him as counterfeits. He abstains from our ways as from filthiness. And he pronounces to the end of the just to be blessed. And makes his boast that Yahweh is his Abba. Verse 17, he said, let, let us see if his words are true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of his life. For if the just man be the son of Yahweh, he will help him. He's saying Yahweh will help him. He will deliver him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with the spitefulness and torture, that we may know how meek he is and prove his patience and forbearance. Verse 20, let us condemn him. Did not the scribes and the Pharisees condemn Yahshua HaMashiach, the righteous man? They hated him because his actions and the words he spoke show the perverseness and the evilness that dwell in that institute at that day, Yisrael, in the house of Almighty Yahweh, in the temple back then, Yisrael. All Yahweh, Yahshua did at that time, it just showed the wickedness of a people and of a nation. Verse 21. Such things did they imagine and were deceived. For their own wickedness has blinded them. We should tell the Yahweh for that, Yisrael. Because even at that time, the scribes and the Pharisees, the Koyin of that day, if they would have realized the plan of Almighty Yahweh from the beginning, because in this was the process of the enemy, Yisrael, the condemnation of Yahshua HaMashiach upon that state. If he would have known that it would bring a deliverance for his house and for his people, and that it would seal his people throughout all nations and all generations, if they would really knew who Yahshua HaMashiach was, then they would not have impelled him on the state. Hallelujah. So I told you Yahweh for that. Reading on. Such things, see, they were blinded by their wickedness and by their imaginations. Satan, he was moving so swift, he could not even retract his own steps. He could not see that this was all the plan of Almighty Yahweh. Again, such things did they imagine, and they were deceived. For their own wickedness has blinded them. Verse 22. As for the secret purposes of Almighty Yahweh, it was secret. It was not for the Gentile or those to know, Yisrael. It was only for the house of Yisrael even to know. As for the secret purposes of Yahweh, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness or discerned the reward for the blameless souls. 
You know, there is a reward for us, Yisrael, if we will walk blameless in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. For Yahweh created man to be immortal and made him to be in the image of his own eternity. Verse 24, the last verse in wisdom, then we're going to move on to Metitia. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil of Satan came death into the world, and they do hold of his side to experience it. So even this process of death, the enemy, he thought that he had the victory. But we all know, Yisrael, that it was to his demise. That by the death of Yahshua HaMashiach and by his resurrection, we have eternal life. We have the power over the enemy. We have the power to live our lives every day, Yisrael, sinless and without sin, just as Yahshua HaMashiach did. So all the enemy did was just seal his faith. And allow the word of Almighty Yahweh, the prophecies, to come to flourishing. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 26. I do want to begin reading, Yisrael. And there's quite a bit of reading. I'm going to read the entire chapter. Why? Because we have to understand the process step by step. I look and I try to figure a way I can skip through this, but I just can't, Yisrael. So let us turn to Matthew's. Chapter 26, I'm going to read the entire chapter of 26 to chapter 27. And then when we get to 27, I'm going to go uh, the first 10 verses that we may get an understanding, Israel. The price of this condemnation to Yahshua HaMashiach. But yet, even in our ignorance, even in the ignorance of the enemy, even at that day, did not see the secret of this precious work that Yahweh was wrought or was bringing in Yahshua HaMashiach. So if this process was not walked through step by step as Yahweh has planned, then it would have been a work that was incomplete. It would have been a work that was not finished. Just as the sacrifices of the Zabat, the offering of the bullocks and of the lambs, of the pigeons, of the scapegoat for the sins of Yisrael was not complete, then this work would have not been complete, Yisrael. The thought of sin and the, the torture of the wrath of sin, Yisrael, would not have been removed. So we would still be offering bullock even unto this day. And if we look out in our fields, there would not be enough for us, Yisrael. The breeds are mixed. There's no perfect lambs out there. No perfect, perfect cows or or bulls. So Yahweh, he allowed his word to take this course. That even through the stripes and the ridicule and the shame that it faced, that yet even in that, put into the earth, that it came forth yet with still, with power of redemption for us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 26, verse 1. I do begin reading it. And it came to pass when Yahshua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, We know that after two days is the feast of Passover, Peshach. And the sons of man, he shall be portrayed and impaled. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place of the high priest, the high Kohen, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Yahshua HaMashiach by subtility, by lies, by secret Yisrael, and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar amongst the people. Now when Yahshua was in Bethany, in the house of Simeon, the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it upon his head. And he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, 
They had imagination or imagined saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given unto the poor. See, already right there, the price. Already thinking about money, how much the oil was worth. And forgetting about the purpose of the anointing, even at this time, which is very important, Israel. And I will not get into that anointing. But we have heard the messages preached concerning the anointing of Yahshua HaMashiach. So I'm going to move on from here. Then when Yahshua understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you, the woman? For she hath wrought a tough work upon me. For you have the poor always with you. But me, you should not have always. For in that she hath poured this anointing, this anointment upon my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this message shall be preached in the whole Olam, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Then once the twelve called Yehudas Hiscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Do you see that, Israel? Was he not already in their minds thinking about the money? He held the bag. He held the price, Israel. So even at this, at this portrayal, he is asking Yehuda Hiscariot, what will you give me? What price will you pay me that I may bring Yahshua HaMashiach into your hands? Verse 15 again. And said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they convened with themselves for 30 pieces of silver. So they decided that they would give him 30 pieces of silver, Yisrael. Was that much money, really? I mean, you figure two, three thousand dollars, five or six thousand dollars. Is the lamb or the breath of a man? Can a number be placed on that, Yisrael? It cannot. But yet, for 30 pieces of silver, do we sell Yahshua out, Yisrael, for 30 pieces of silver? For something that will not last? I don't care if it was two or three million dollars, it will not last. Five, six, seven million dollars, it would exceed you before you are able to spend it all. But yet for 30 pieces of silver? Is that what the, the, is that what the Dharma Yahshua means unto us? His body? His life? The Torah of Almighty Yahweh walking in flesh amongst men. We sell them out just for a feel good for the moment. For deceit. For lies. To shed the blood of our, our, our whole Israel. Does he mean so little to us? It shows what, how much he meant to Yehuda Hiscariot. Did not mean much, did it? But this was the price that was laid upon Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay, let us move on. Hallelujah. And from that time, he saw opportunity to portray him. For 30 pieces of silver, do we see opportunity to portray or betray our whole and our heart, our Israel for what? What do we gain for it? To lie against my heart or my hope? Or to lie to my heart or my hope? Now, on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came unto Yahshua HaMashiach, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we should prepare thee, or prepare to eat this Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples, with my disciplined ones. And the disciples did as Yahshua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. 
And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Hallelujah. Which one of us was that one? Are there more of us in here than that, Israel? Hallelujah. This ruach of Judah Hiscariot shows the house of Yisraeli. Why? Because we have sold him out, Yisraeli. We have given him and given him into the hands of the wicked and the unjust to be judged, to be condemned, to die at the stake. Hallelujah. But Yahweh, he had an intent and a purpose. Did Yahweh have to allow this to go forth? He did not have to, but he had to. Why? Because it was in his plan for the beginning, Israel. Hallelujah. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Master, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish or in the cup, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by who the Son of Man is betrayed. Did you hear that, Yisrael? He said, Woe unto him. He said, May that man be damned. May that man be consumed. May he be condemned, Yisrael. That was the house of Yisrael. Did he have a chance, those of us that know the Torah or this, did he have a chance to get it right? No, he did not. He took his own life, did he not, Yisrael? I will get to that as we read, read on. But yet Yahweh, through Yahshua HaMashiach, has given us, as we hear so many times, the second chance. Did Cain have a second chance? No, he did not. But Yahweh has given us a second chance in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahweh has given us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, Israel, to get it right. Even us being here on this very day, breathing the air, he has given us just opportunity. Hallelujah. The Son of Man goeth as it was written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been tough for that man if he had not been born. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we have been born again? Of the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. Yeah. Then you, Yehudas, Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? Knowing all this time that it was him. But yet, don't you see the deception of his own left? How he judged himself? Is it I? Did he think in his own mind that Yahshua Hamashiach did not know? He knew. He knew it was him, Yisrael. And he said unto him, you said it. Thou sayest. You confessed it. Verse 26, and as they were eating, Yahshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them and said, drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the, of my, of the New Testament, which is shed for many over the remissions of sin. He's talking about his body, even then, Yisrael. Given for the remissions of sin, for many, for the salvation of many to be Yahshua. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it of anew with you in my Avat's kingdom. I'm waiting for that day, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That we could drink of this covenant, of this precious offering of Almighty Yahweh, of this cup of new Yisrael. Hallelujah. But yet, even in this time, we can drink of it continuously. Hallelujah. Because why? We understand. We understand now. And we know why Yahshua HaMashiach 
went through this trial as he went through it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So let us pray that Yahweh fill up our cups. Hallelujah. Fill up even the emptiness of our own nephesh and of our soul, Yisrael. And when he has and when he has sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Yahshua unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall go and be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. So Peter, he answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. And Yahshua said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that this night, before the cock crow, you shall deny me thrice, three times. How many times have we denied Yahshua, Yisrael? Time after time, even more times than what he did. We have denied Yahshua HaMashiach. And it says here that he said unto him, Kepha, though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Yahshua with them unto the place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit you here while I go and pray yonder. Hallelujah. Let's move on from here, Yisrael, because of time. Let's move down. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, let's just move to verse 67 of that same chapter. And then we will get to move into verse, into chapter 27. I want to get the, the gist of where I'm going before I bring this message to a close, Yisrael. Verse 67. This is showing the reviling of the Torah of the word Yahshua HaMashiach as he, it was put to shame. And it, was put, it would be put to the test. Just as I read in Wisdom, they tried him, they beat him, they ridiculed him, they spat in his face. Why? Because they was trying his patience to see if he would lose it. Don't you know the enemy tries our patience? To see if we were, as the world would say, as we would lose it, if we would go off. We will find another way besides the Torah to deal with the situation or circumstance. He tries our patience. And don't you know that in our patience possess our nephesh, our souls, Yisrael? So it says here in verse 67, Then did they spit in his face, and they buffeted him. They slapped him. They hit him. And the other smote him with the palms of their hands. You know, that hurts. You know, my, my, my other had big hands. And I'm going to be honest with you. Many times, no hands felt, they hurt more than the switch did. Hallelujah. Saying, prophesy unto us, Messiah, who is he that smote you? So he was blinded. He could not see. Who smote him? But believe me, he knew. He knew. But yeah, he did not open his mouth, Yisrael. Now Kephah sat without in the place, and a dancer came unto him, saying, Aren't you also with this Yahshua Hamashiach of Galilee? But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what you say. Do we do that, Yisrael? When we're in the crowds, when we're amongst our kindred, when we are amongst the groups of the world, and they ask us, did you say you following what? This Yahshua now? Oh, no, no. I, I, no, I'm not following. I don't know him. Oh, man. Israel, y'all, come on. We, we, we cannot do that. We cannot deny Yahshua HaMashiach before the world. Because if we bow down before the world, the little is our strength. And we have great strength. Yahweh here is our rock. It's not here our defense. So why should we be afraid of what the world would say or what they think? To hell what they think. 
to hell what they say. Hallelujah. I stand up on a sure foundation. I know who I am. I know who shed his dawn for me. So should we be as a, a dog, as a puppy, or hide our tail between our legs just right here? But yet we do it. Hallelujah. Just as Kephah, he said, I will not deny you before men. I will even die for you, but yet he doesn't know him. Verse 71. And when he, when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him, Another maid saw him and said unto them, What were there that were there? These fellows were also with Yahshua of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, with a promise, with a slight swearing. It says here, I do not know the man. 73, and after a while came unto him, and after a while came unto him they that stood by, and said unto Kephah, surely you also art one of them, for your speech it betrayeth you. Then began he to curse and to swear, my, my. He began to curse and to swear. Do we find ourselves cursing the name of Almighty Yahweh? And don't you know, cursing or blaspheming his name is more than you just pronouncing his name and saying something uh, vulgar behind it. But it's denying even his validity or not even speaking or proclaiming his name, Israel. It says in verse 74, Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately, right after that, prophecy, and immediately the cock crew. And Kephah, he remembered the words of Yahshua, which said unto him, Before the, rock, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. He wept bitterly, Yisrael. I'm going to back up, Yisrael, because in my haste, I should not be hastening, I missed something that is very important um, in this chapter. So let us, let us back up. I did skip to 67. But we're, we're going to have to go back, Yisrael. I don't want to leave out this. This is most important. Hallelujah. You're just going to have to bear with me. On this Shabbat, hallelujah. We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything but uplifting his name, Israel. So let us not be weary with the word of Almighty Yahweh, all right? This is important. So I'm going to back up. Hallelujah. I'm going to back up to 41 and read until I get to my point where I want to show. Because it's important concerning this as the price, as I was speaking, the 30 pieces of silver. And what that brought unto Yehudas this scary. All right? So in 41, it says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The Ruach indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is, this, if it is your will that this cup pass away from me, Except I drink it, thy will be done. So Yahshua is saying, if it be your will, which we know it was his will, Yisrael, he said, let the cup pass from me. And he came and found them asleep again, and their eyes were heavy, and, they left, and he left them and went again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he, to his disciples, and said unto them to sleep now and take your rest because they were sleeping in this time. This was a very important time. This was not a time to be slumbering. This was not a time to be drunk in Israel. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is, behold, 
It is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Yahudas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude too, with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave him a sign, saying, Whomsoever I should kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forth while he came to Yahshua and said, Most powerful master, hail, and kiss him. And Yahshua said unto him, Friend, did he call him friend? Did it say friend in your rendition, Israel? Yeah. Wherefore art thou come? Then came you, or they, and laid hands on Yahshua and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahshua stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high Kohen and smote off his ear. Then said Yahshua unto him, Put away again your sword into its place. For all they that take a sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray unto my father, my Abba, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of Malach, Melikim. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it may be? And that same hour said Yahshua unto, his, unto the multitude, Are you come out against a thief with swords and staves? Was Yahshua a thief? Was he a heretic? But yet they come with their sword and their staves. This is showing the power of the wickedness and what they stood upon. Did not the young man draw out his sword? So even by that same sword or that instrument, which is the wickedness, should they die even by their own condemnation or by their own wickedness? It says, as a thief with swords and staves for to take me, I sat daily with you, teaching in the bayet, in the high places, and you laid no hold upon me. But all this was done that the Torah, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples, they forsook and they fled. They turned and they ran. And it said they turned and they walked. It said that they fled, Yisrael. Do we turn and do we flee? From the Torah, from the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, seeing the reproach, seeing the shame, seeing what he had to go through. So they knew if they stood with him that they would be taken also in captivity. So they ran. Does a warrior run? No. That's why our loins must be girdled with truth, Yisrael. Just as Yahweh told Eo, girdle up your loins. Tighten up. Prepare yourself. 57, and they which had laid hold on Yahshua HaMashiach led him away to Calephias, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Kephal followed them afar off into the high priest's place and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Let me move down some, Yisrael Yah. No, let me just keep reading. Let me keep reading. And now the chief priests and the elders all counseled and sought fault witness against Yahshua HaMashiach to put him to death. But found none. So they found none, Yisrael. They sought for foul, false witnesses amongst the people, those that were there, and no one spoke up. Yea, though many false witnesses came, Yet they found none, though there was many false witnesses, and that's what they came for, to falsely accuse Yahshua HaMashiach. But none of them had the guts to even get up or to stand. Why? Because they knew this man was innocent. They knew Yahshua HaMashiach had done no wrong. He was neither a thief, neither was he a murderer, Yisrael. 
at the last time came two false witnesses. So at the last minute, two false witnesses. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the buyer of Yahweh and build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answereth you nothing? What is it which these things or these witnesses witness against you? But Yahshua held his shalom. And the high priest Cohen answered and said unto him, I adjure you by the living Abba that you would tell us whether you be Messiah, the son of Almighty Yahweh. Yahshua said unto him, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, Whereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of the Shemayims? Then the high Kohen rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What father need do we have of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard this blasphemy. What think you? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. So they made the decision. They made the proclamation. They condemn Yahshua HaMashiach unto death, even though he has not done no wrong, Israel. They had to bring forth false witnesses, even to condemn this man, Israel. But even at that, we know that it just was in the will of Almighty Yahweh that we may learn, that we may understand that even as they hated Yahshua HaMashiach, they despise even us in this hour, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us move on to chapter 27. Then when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yahshua HaMashiach to put him to death. And when they had brought him, they led him away and delivered him unto Pontius, the governor, the Yahudah, which had betrayed him, then he saw, when he saw that he was condemned, Yahshua was condemned, he repented himself and brought, against, and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and to the elders. So you see what he done? Then he was sorrowful. He seen what he had done. He had condemned or was the cause of condemning Yahshua HaMashiach to death for a meager 30 pieces of silver. So he tried to find a way to make his wrongs right. So he brought the 30 pieces of silver back. But it was too late, Israel. He brought the Back to the priest and the elder saying, I have sinned. Don't you know that we have sinned, Yisrael? We have sinned. And I have portrayed the innocent blood. Don't you see this spirit? So you must understand, as I asked me some time ago, do the same spirits that dwell back in Noah's day, do they still abide in this time? Sure they do. Sure they do. They don't see death as men. Even the example I've been using, even Cain. You see the spirit he operated on? This is the same spirit right here. Why? Because he betrayed or he was the cause of this innocent blood being shed. Even the example of, of, of Abel prophesied even from the beginning and many times through Torah showing this revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. So he says, say I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is this to us? They didn't care. 30 pieces of silver? It wasn't even worth spitting on. They didn't want it. Be honest with you, they wouldn't have wanted it if it was a thousand pieces of silver. Why? Let us read on. He said, what is it to us seeing thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the buyer in the temple and departed. And he went 
And what did he do? He hanged himself. He hanged himself. Because he seen what he has done. There was no turning around. There was no turning back. There's nothing he could do to prevent what was inedible, Yisrael. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury. Look at them. They're trying to even wash their own hands of even this price. Because it is the price of blood. 30 pieces of silver, the price of life of a man, was this the worth? This was the price that was paid, Israel, for the condemnation of Yahshua HaMashiach. So even in, in us, our flesh, what are we worth? 30 pieces of silver? Are we worth even that, Israel? Hallelujah. Our lives are just as the grass of the field. It grows, it dies, and it withers away, Israel. Hallelujah. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field. Why? To bury strangers in it. That's all it was worth. That's what they used the money to buy a potter's field, a graveyard, a place to bury strangers. Not for the elite, not for the well-known. It's for the man that dies on the street and nobody knows his name. Hallelujah. Yet, Yahshua HaMashiach, even at this time, he knew the names of every one of us in here this day. Hallelujah. He knows us by name, Israel. Then was it fulfilled that was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was to value, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and they gave them for the father's field as Yahweh had appointed to me, or as Yahweh had told me this prophecy, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So even in seeing this, Yisrael, we can look back even on our own lives and see, see where we have fallen short. See where we have betrayed Yahshua HaMashiach for a little or nothing. We sin and we continue to sin, Yisrael. It's time to stop, Yisrael. Don't you know there is no more offering for us, Yisrael, when we sin willfully, willingly, knowing the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Yahshua is not going to shed his blood again, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So even in that act, we condemn our own selves. We try to justify our, even our own, and even in our own mouths, we condemn ourselves, Yisrael. Our actions condemn us, and it should not be so. Yahweh has made the provisions for us, Yisrael, for us to do that which is pleasing and that which is acceptable in his eyes, in his sight. Hallelujah. Let us continue, Yisrael. Hallelujah. For the mercies of Yahweh, they endure. And they're everlasting. They endure forever, Yisrael. And I told the Yahweh for that. You just think about for a moment all that he has done for you. He has kept you. Even though we have sinned, he has pardoned our sin, Yisrael, through Yahshua HaMashiach, to give us opportunity and time to build our bayit, these places where he shall, or where he has put his ruach. But he wants to fill up these places, Yisrael. He wants us to be full of his ruach, full of his Torah, full of his word. That we could go just as Yahshua HaMashiach did, knowing what he had to face, yet he did not back down. Hallelujah. And what did his act and what he did, it provided and it produced life. Everything that we do when it is finished, Israel, it should produce life. We should better look back and see life in it. It should pr produce fruit, not death. If you look back at what you do and you see death, and you, there's no life being produced, there's no fruit after that. 
then it's, it's vanity, Israel. It is vain. It is dead. And it will not be acceptable unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. It will not be acceptable unto Almighty Yahweh. So we should do all things, everything, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Torah to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, we need you, Abba. All right, turn with me to Matthews, chapter 12, verse 31. Matthew 12, Matitia 12, verse 31. Hallelujah. You know, the word of Yahweh, it, it can be our condemnation if we do not walk accordingly, or it could be a deliverance if we will obey Israel. Matitia chapter 12, verse 31. Therefore I say to you, that all manner of sin and of blasphemy it shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Ruah HaKodesh, he says, shall not be forgiven unto men. Do we borderline on that, Israel? Don't you see Yahshua HaMashiach, he's drawing the line and said, don't come past that. Verse 32. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven unto him. But whosoever speak against the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of life that Yahweh gives, it shall not be forgiven unto him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Neither make thee three good, And his fruit tough, neither make the tree tough, and his fruit tough, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. So if we are a tree, and it is a tree of life, of wealth and health, then the fruit that is produced will be fruits of life, of health. But if it's a wicked tree, then all you're going to get out of that tree is wickedness, Yisrael. So in this we know the tree by the fruits that it bears. Verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak tough things? For out of the abundance of the left does the mouth speak. A tough man out of the tough treasures of his heart bring forth those things which are tough. And an evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, brings forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that a man speaks, they shall give a, an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words you shall be justified. Did not, did not Eo understood this? As he spoke with Almighty Yahweh. For your words you shall be justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. Verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Rabbi, we will see a sign from you. Talking to Yahshua. This is backing up before he was impaled on the stake. But he answered and said unto them, that an evil and adulterous generation, they seek it after a sign. But there should be no sign given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, was not Yahshua in the earth three days and three nights, Yisrael? So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Verse 41. 
And it says here, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation. Talk about this generation, this present time, Israel. Why? And shall condemn us, condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater one than Jonah, it is here. This is Yahshua HaMashiach, Israel. In verse 42, it says, The queen of the south shall rise up, even in judgment, with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom as Solomon. And behold, a greater one than Solomon is here. Don't you know the greater one than Solomon is here, Israel? A greater one than even, even Yonah is here with us, Israel. Hallelujah. It is Yahshua HaMashiach. So should we disannow his words? Should we just take what we have heard today and just put it to the side? Hallelujah. Yokohana chapter 1. Yokohana 1, chapter 3, verse 13. For it speedeth Israel. Let us hear up and turn there. As I bring this message to a close, we're going to end here, right here in Yokohan. First Yokohan, chapter 3, verse 21. Let us remember this, Israel. There is therefore no condemnation to those that are in. Yahshua HaMashiach, but we must be in Yahshua HaMashiach. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach, HaKodesh. It says here in verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know, we know that we have passed from death to life, because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that a murderer, no murderer, has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby know we the love of Yahshua, because he has laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our ark, for our hope, for our brothers, for our sisters, Israel. Yahshua, he laid down his life for us. He came down from the Shemayim, from the right hand of the Abba, and was clothed in this earthen vessels, yet made a little lower than the Malah. Why? That he may die in this flesh body. That he may endure the shame and the ridicule and feel the pains, Yisrael, for us, Yisrael. And he gave his life for us. So let us give our lives in this same manner, in like manner for one another. For in this will the world know that we are the disciplined ones of Almighty Yahweh. See, the disciples, when Yahshua HaMashiach was taken, when he was betrayed, they were not willing to give up his life, their lives. Because they were stayed right there. They were endured right there with him, Yisrael. Let us not run. Let us abide in the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach, no matter what comes our way. Because if we do that, Yisrael, then even in the end, and then even in our death, it will bring forth life. It will bring forth resurrection. It will bring forth reassurance for my op. I see my op perish. I see him die in the Amuna. We have seen those that have gone from the moon. Why? That we may move on. That we may press on, Israel. That we may endure hardness as the tough soldiers. That we may fight as valiant warriors. Hallelujah. Hereby know we the love of Yahshua HaMashiach, because he had laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoso has this world's tub of the good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him. How does the Ahava of Yahweh dwell in him? I see my ark in need. I see my ark. He's weak. He may not be as strong as I am. 
but I'm not willing to give up my life for my op, that he may proceed in the Torah, that he may be strong enough to endure. Verse 18, my little children, let us love in word. My little children, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So let our actions and our lives speak for us. Let truth come forth from our bosom and out of our mouths, just right, y'all. Not lying one to another. Verse 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure ourselves before him. For if our heart condemn us, if we know in ourselves that we are not walking right, if we know we're walking in a hypocritical spirit, we know we're not true with our op and with our, our, our hope. We're just here for advantage because we have no other place to go. If we know this in our hearts and it condemns us, don't you know that Yahweh is greater than our hearts? And he knows all things just right, y'all. So we're not getting by. You might as well just get real, Yisrael, y'all. Let us stop with the, the plain and the deceiving, Yisrael, y'all. And let us get things right with Almighty Yahweh while we have a chance. He has given us opportunity, Yisrael, y'all, while we still have breath in our bodies. Verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, when we, if our heart condemn us not, when we have convinced confidence toward Almighty Yahweh. And whosoever asks if we have this confidence, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Did Yahshua do the things which were pleasing in his sight? What are we doing this day, Yisrael? You answer yourself by your own heart. You can judge your own heart. You know, you know whether you're walking according to the Torah. You know what you need to pull up at. You know what you have to stop doing. So if your heart condemns you, is Yahweh greater than your heart? Is the Torah not greater? Yisrael, Yah. So let us do the things that are pleasing in his sight, it says in verse 22. Verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we believe in his name? Do we believe it was Yahshua HaMashiach that gave his life for us, Yisrael? Yeah. And Ahava one another as he, Ahava one another as he gave us commandment. My last verse, Yisrael, yeah, for this evening. Verse 24. And he that keeps his commandment dwells in him. If we keep his mitzvah, if we keep his Torah, we abide in his commandments. Yisrael, it says here that we dwell in him. And he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us. How? By the ruah which he has given. He has given it, Israel. He has given his life. He's given his breath. He has given his body for us. That's how we know. Hallelujah. Because of the offering. He gave himself willingly in obedience, Israel. The pain, the agony that he suffered for what? For our sins. We were condemned unto death. But yet, all the sin was placed on Yahshua HaMashiach. And he died for us, Yisrael. But we have redemption. We have hope. Because on the third day, he got up. With the power of death, hell, and the grave, the keys in his hand, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So should we fear the enemy death anymore? No, we should not fear. Because that time is appointed to every one of us, Yisrael. There are those that are closer to death than others. And it's more than just the age. It could be a child. It could be a baby. But know this, that all those that die in Yahshua HaMashiach, hallelujah, are promised eternal life with him. 
Hallelujah. So let us not be afraid of death, Yisrael. And that, that is not saying that we should not walk in the best of health as we have life in our bodies. Hallelujah. But we have no need to be afraid of death anymore because Yahshua HaMashiach, if we are in him, Yisrael, he has those keys. Hallelujah. So let us commit our lives, what we do, our actions, how we carry ourselves amongst one another unto Yahshua HaMashiach. And let's do all things by his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray this message has been a, a consult, has been an encouragement for your love this evening, Yisrael. And that we not sell out Yahshua HaMashiach like Yehudas Hiscariot. For his prices is, is not, is, his life was not able to be priced, Yisrael. It's much greater than an amount that we can even conceive by money amount, Yisrael. Why? Because it saved all of our lives, Yisrael. All of our lives from the pit of hell, from the separation from Almighty Yahweh. And then even at that, he has made us all heirs and joint heirs of the great riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Where not even moth or rust can corrupt it, Yisrael. Yahweh has given us, has made a place for every one of us to abide in his melhut. Hallelujah. So isn't that worth fighting for? Isn't that worth giving up our lives for, Yisrael, knowing that we have a place and an inheritance of all things through Yahshua HaMashiach? Hallelujah. So let us not trample his dom underfoot, but let's continually think upon him, meditate upon the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that we may walk circumspect and that we may walk sadiq, that we may walk righteous in his sight. That when we come into his tabernacle and we lift up our hands, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor unto his nostrils, and that he will smile on us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Toda Yah. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. But I want, all, I want us all to sing this song as one of Zakeem Benjamin's favorite songs. And Yahweh, he has smiled on us. Hallelujah. So let's sing a couple of choruses of that before we dismiss and before we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you start that for us? I hope that we can start somewhat in the right, right key. But the main key is the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Smile on me, he has set me free. Come on, Israel. Yeah, Well, lift your hands, Israel. Smile on me. He has set me free. Yah has smiled on me. He's been touched. Yahshua. Oh, he bared the stake along, Yisrael. Oh, for us. Hallelujah. Yes. On me, he has said. Oh, he has made us free, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Your hands smile on me. To me. We do Barak all Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let us turn, let us shrew unto your Rusulayim. That while we are in this state of bondage, we know we have been set free 
by the Dharma Yahshua HaMashiach. So we turn to New Jerusalem as we pray on this evening. Almighty Yahweh, we do Barak you for another day you have given us, another opportunity, another chance, Abba Yahweh, you have given us to make straight those crooked paths, Abba Yahweh. We do talk to you for all those that have listened by via live stream. We do ask that you will give Ray Dawi strength on this evening as he brings forth yet another message there in Los Angeles, California. We pray, Abba Yahweh, that all those that you intend to come to that meeting, Yahweh, that they will make it there safely without any kind of hindrance, Abba Yahweh, that they may hear the wonderful word of Almighty Yahweh. And not only that, that they, that we, they may be judged. Hallelujah. So we desire you, Abba Yahweh, to judge us, but not in your anger, Abba Yahweh, that we may be delivered in this last and evil days. We do ask that you will look upon Zakane Shimri on this day, strengthen him in his body. Also, Zakain, bend me, touch him in his body, Abba Yahweh. All those that need a touch in their body tonight, we do ask, Abba Yahweh, you will look upon Ak Micaiah, his Ishal, and Zak and Ak Zephaniah on this day. All Israel, those that are scattered throughout the old land. And in all things, Abba Yahweh, we give you toda, we give you praise in the precious name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahbarak ko Yisrael. Hallelujah. Toda Yah.